Gracie, Gracie, you got supper started? Papa's coming in now from the gardens. We're finished. You better have supper started, you hear me? Hey, Gracie. Gracie, you know, I see you got stuff laid out, but you haven't got the onion or the garlic. Peeled or chopped? What's with that, Gracie? Huh? What's going on? Oh, well, hello there, friend and family. I didn't see you snuck over there in the corner like that. But I'm glad you dropped by. And I see you got by the kitty crew and, of course, Gracie, too, which is sitting here wondering what we're going to be putting out for supper. She knows what she's getting. But she's not quite sure what we're going to all be having tonight. And what we're going to be having is one of my father's recipes, you might say. Pop, he loved Mexican style food. I won't, he loved Mexican food. But we rarely went to Mexico. We did some while we were stationed in El Paso. I was just a little boy then. Anyway, we'd run across the border a couple of times when we were down there. But he would made up his own when we got back north of the border some of his own recipes with what we had and what was available in the States. And that's what I'm going to be showing you tonight. One of his recipes for none other than a bean burrito. I hope you enjoy. So hey, grab a chair, grab a snack, grab a cold drink, and get ready to see how Papa made bean burritos north of the border back in the day. Okay? You did really good, Gracie. Yeah. Well, Gracie, are you ready to get with it? We got things to do. Huh? Don't turn your back on me. Come on. Get your apron on. Wash up. Let's get to slicing and dicing, okay? Yeah. We'll see all about that, right? Well, as always, we're going to need a few things to put this delectable dish together. Well, it's not a dish more than it's a, you know, type of sandwich south of the border. But this was Dad's recipe for north of the border. Bean burritos. Yeah, I guess it's a type of a sandwich, isn't it? Yeah, down in old Mexico. Anyway, what you're going to be needing. And we're using today, or this evening, the old El Paso brand of refried beans. 31 ounce can we are, traditional. And we're going to be adding into that some of the Sure Pine brand. Choice tomatoes, petite diced with green chilies as well as a 10 ounce can of Old El Paso red enchilada sauce. To season it up and make it nice and spice, we're going to be using two packets of the Old El Paso hot and spicy taco seasoning mix. Yes, we are. Now, if you don't like hot and spicy, don't use hot and spicy. You could use the original, mild or medium, whatever you prefer. We'll be adding in one medium to large diced onion and six garlic cloves diced as well. Well, smashed and diced. And that's what we're going to be putting together for our filling for the bean burritos, like my daddy did. And we'll be making them here with Chi Chi's flour burrito style tortillas. Yep, I believe these are 10 inch. If I had to guess. Now over here, we'll be having also some of the Zataran Spanish rice. And adding into it some diced tomatoes with green chilies. From the fine folks at Rotel, we'll be using the original recipe. The sliced black olives are for when we get it all done and we start to put them together. Along with several other toppings, I might add. But you'll see all of that when we get the filling made and we're ready to start making our north of the border bean burritos. Okay? You might notice the onion color has changed from the yellow we showed you earlier to this white. Well, there's good reason. The yellow onion was not too good inside when I cut it open. No, it was not. So, I had to get out another onion, which we have right here, which I actually bought 
for this recipe. And I forgot all about it. Because what I have learned is down in old Mexico, they tend to prefer the white onions when they prepare their dishes instead of the yellow. Something about it's, it's a brighter flavor. I don't know. I personally don't use white onions that often. But we're gonna tonight in our north of the border bean burritos. Yes, we are. As soon as we get them all slice and dice, because Grace ain't helping. I gotta get something to put these diced onions on. Hold on a second. Got a speck plate right there. That'll work. We'll just set that one right over there while we go ahead with our Ginzu chef knife. And we're not fast at this. And you can cut them any size you want. I cut, you know, just randomly. Anywhere from eighth, three sixteenths, maybe a quarter inch. Yep. Getting a little close to the pinkies there. And I know this ain't like you know they show everybody on the internet making all those fancy cuts and all that stuff. I don't care about none of that. I just care about getting some onion cut up without cutting me. And I sort of do like larger cuts. Not too large. And I don't know what it is tonight. You know, I'm tired. And I'm a little bit of onion challenged by the looks of it. <laughs> yep, the onion is giving me a run for my money. Yes, it is. And that was a huge white onion. I will say that. So I'm not sure we'll be using the whole thing in with our bean. Because we do need some for topping. I like to have some fresh onion diced up. You know, this onion is not going as smoothly as I would have liked. But it'll all eat. You know what I'm saying? Surely it will. But we're going to get that on in here. And I'm going to say, because that's about two-thirds of that large, well, really, it was massive, <laughs> white onion. And I'm going to go ahead and dice this up and put it on another plate for fresh onion as a topping. Ooh, that's a lot of onion. And we'll sneak us out about six cloves of this fine garlic. There's four. And this is white soft neck garlic. And if your garlic's already starting to sprout, it's still edible. Don't worry about it. Okay? Mine all sprouts. Before I can get to it. Ooh, we're making a mess tonight. No wonder Gracie didn't want to do it. And then you just take your chef's knife and you want to crush your garlic. Stand on it. Because you know when you crush it like that, it lets all those oils come out. And you know, it actually is more garlicky. If you do this, yep, plus makes the peel a lot easier. So now, once we got it all nice and smashed, it's just a simple task of peeling it. I don't need one of them garlic peels. I don't need put it in a glass jar or do any craziness like that. This works fine for me. Just smash it really good. And I mean, as soon as you smash it, 
you know, you're going to smell the garlic. Yes, you are. Like, I'm smelling it right now. Woo! My fingers are getting nice and sticky with all that wonderful garlic oil. There we go. Now, I'm just going to cut off the end. Some of this I smushed the life out. That's okay. Make it all the more better. We're just going to cut those root ends off. You know? Wrong. We're going to have to wash up. We're getting so sticky with this garlic. Gracie won't want to be loving me tonight. Got the ends off. Now, just feed them under this here. Chef's knife. Woo. She's smelling good. And I know those packets of seasoning from Old El Paso, they have some garlic in them, but it ain't the same. Now you can use that jarred garlic if you want. You know, it'll give you a milder flavor. I've used it. I don't use it no more because this ain't all that hard, you know. We're just going to get our own your own plate over here. Make us a little place for our garlic. Uh oh, got some on the counter. Ooh, that stuff's sticky. Sticking everywhere. Anywho. There's an onion in our garlic. Now we just got to clean up. Clean up on counter three. Hey, let me wash up and clean up. I'll be right back. Well, now we got our onions chopped and our garlic diced all up. You know, all that crazy stuff. We're ready to do some actual cooking here. Yes, we are. Got us a nice size pot there. And we're going to set it on a medium heat. That'd be five on my stove. I don't know what it'd be on your stove. And we're just going to let that cast aluminum pan come up to temp. And before we throw in the onions, we're going to put us in just a touch. Maybe about a tablespoon of extra birch olive oil. You can use whatever type of oil you want to use. We're using organic, great value. Extra virgin olive oil we are. Good stuff. Like I said, you know, it takes a minute to get this here old cast aluminum pan Cadillac. We're just going to throw in those onion right now. And it seems like a lot of onion, but we got a lot of beans too. And I like onion. You don't like so much onion, you don't got to put that much in. Put you in a half of a large onion. And that. And we're just going to let them start to saute in the bottom of that pan. Yes, we are. You know, we'll saute them until we hear the sizzle. And we, while y'all were away for that moment, we also got all the cans opened up. I mean, really, this was doing prep work. Chop up, peel, chop onion, peel and chop garlic. And the rest was just get a can opener and open cans. Hey, my dad liked recipes like that he surely did of course a lot of times he just invented stuff from whatever mama had on hand in the kitchen at the time he wanted to throw something together much was the case with this i'm thinking i'm sure you can hear it those onions are just starting to sizzle we're not going to cook them to any real depth nope 
we're just going to let them start sizzling there. It means the pan's all nice and hot. Yep. And we're going to just get, let them get a little bit translucent. That's all we're doing. We don't want to caramelize them. Of course, you could if you wanted to, but I don't. I want to keep that fresh, crisp onion flavor in with my Priolis. I don't know what you want, but that's what I want. And that's what Papa wanted when he made this. Yep. Now that we got the onion sizzling, we're just going to go ahead and scrape off on that garlic. Right on in there too. Woo! There we go. Next we're going to add in the choice tomatoes, petite diced, with green chilies. Nope, we're not even going to drain them. We're going to put them in there and actually we're going to rinse out the can a little bit. It'll be okay. We're going to get every drop of that goodness. Right there. Next up to bat. Is we're going to add in our red enchilada sauce. Oh yeah. And we'll give that can a little bit of rinse too. Now you might wonder what's going to come of all this moisture. Oh, trust me. It's going to get in with those beans and it's going to make everything all the more better. Now that we got our onion, our garlic, our diced tomatoes with green chilies and our enchilada sauce on in there, all looking festive. Yeah. We're going to let that start to heat up before adding in the old El Paso. Refried beans. Traditional style. Oh yeah. So as soon as this comes to a nice little low boil, we're ready to start whipping in the beans. Now that our uh, diced tomatoes, enchilada sauce, onions, and garlic have all started to come up to a nice low boil, let's add in some seasoning before we add in the beans, okay? So we're just going to put in a packet of the hot and spicy taco seasoning mix from Old El Paso. And we're just going to give that in a stir. Woo, you can already smell the flavor. Well, there for a minute, I thought I heard some carachas in the background. I don't know. And then we'll add in one more. Now, I think we're ready for the beans. See how easy this is. And we're just going to start plopping in some of these beans. Right into that nice, hot, bubbly onion, tomato, green chili, and garlic mixture. With all those nice spices on it. Yep. And for the most part, this is a fairly economical dish. And I mean, you can do it any way you want. You can have just the basic bean burrito, similar to what Taco Bell sells, which is nothing more than beans and some onion, fresh, sprinkled on top with some of their red enchilada sauce. Yep. And just rolled on up. I should know. Because I eat a pile of them. Now we just got to get this all mixed up. And then. It might look a little moist. 
but that's where we're going to start to let these water that was in the diced tomatoes and the enchilada sauce and all that start to cook off and this will get thicker and thicker and I mean you can get it as thick as you want it I wouldn't get it so thick that it's like a block and it's just basically cooking it down and stirring it to keep it from burning on the bottom till it gets to the consistency that you want now if you're sure of how much moisture and how the consistency will come out you can just go ahead and drain off your tomatoes and green chilies and you can cut back on the red enchilada sauce me I just prefer to dump it all in and let it cook off I mean that onion's got to cook and so does that garlic really that's the only thing in this whole entire recipe that we're cooking are those two things there we go right now she's a little soupy but it won't be that way for long I had the timer set just to remind me to check it to make sure it was on a low boil but I'm going to give it a taste test right now don't mind me oh yeah now it's starting to percolate. I'm going to get a little more of that. That first spoonful was tasty. Yeah, I rinsed the spoon off too. You might have heard that in the background. Mm-mm-mm. For me, that's perfect. Now, if you're not all into the hot and spicy, I mean, it's not, you know, make your uh, mouth burn and that but you can taste it you surely you can like I say you can see it start to sitting there popping up we're gonna turn that heat down to about a pole and we're just gonna let it sit there and cook down just like my padre did Papa. Yep, Pop sit, stand there at the kitchen stove. He liked to tell stories, tell jokes. You know, when he was doing something, some rather outrageous at times, you know. And my mother would scream at him. But I'm going to wash up a little bit. Y'all can be watching that for me as it cooks down okay now why our north of the border bean burrito filling is cooking down to the consistency we desire yep and it's doing it rapidly on a medium on a five and occasionally things pop out yeah we had to clean the stove anyway we're going to start making our zatarans Spanish rice and we're just gonna follow the box directions well sort of kind of and the first thing it says do is add one and a half cups of water to a pan so there's one and there's a half okay and then we got to have our it says use 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes but we didn't have one plus I like the green chilies so we're using a 10 ounce can of Rotel original diced tomatoes with green chilies it'll be okay you can change things up and then we're just gonna take and dump the rice mix on in that pan it's got its seasoning and everything right on in there there you have it 
we're going to give that a little bit of a mix and it, what it says to do is bring it up to a boil and then you're going to let it simmer now we're supposed to bring it up to a boil and once it's up to a boil we're supposed to set it to low so it'll simmer and cover it okay so now we got it all going on we got our bean mixture there cooking off you can see it looks like you know a little lava vents going over there you know reminds you of a volcano right but remember need to give it a stir every once in a while you can see it's cooking on down it goes actually faster than what you think so don't leave it alone too long without some loving attention like stir 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 and understand as it cools down some it's going to get thicker too and i guess you know it's all a matter of experience with the recipe but you know what all you got to do if it gets too thick add a little water thin it out okay if it's too thin you just cook her down some more it ain't hard this ain't rocket science no it ain't like we're making jet fuel here we're making the fillings for an amazing north of the border bean burrito yes we are so y'all watch that and as soon as this gets to boil we'll lower the heat down to really low put a cover on and then we're going to let her cook for about 25 minutes with the cover on we're not going to be peaking see that's where people mess up with rice they want to peak once you put the cover on you just got to go for it it'll be okay well it does appear that our rice over here in this pot is boiling so what the box direction says once it comes to a boil then you cover it turn it down on low which is exactly what we're going to do and let it cook for 25 minutes and if you notice over here on our papa's bean mixture it's already cooked down better than a half an inch yep surely it has getting thicker by the minute and i'm thinking by the time our rice is done our bean mixture will be at the appropriate consistency just saying but it's starting to poof all all, all around so we're going to have to throw a cover on it to contain it and we just happen to have one right here and we're just going to turn that burner down as well because it's getting close to the consistency i want once it cools off some and that's something you got to consider it's going to get cool thicker as your mixture gets cooler towards eating temperature bear that in mind and that's all with experience of cooking these over time so let's just let them cook for about 25 minutes and we'll come back see what we got okay oh well there's the timer telling us our rice is going to be just right you know if you can believe Zatarans. hey let's take a look at it okay Ooh, just take off that lid oh yeah that looks darn right tasty you can see all the spices the petite diced tomatoes and green chilies there from the fine folks at rotel there's our bean filling cooked on down so hey all we got to do now is turn the burners off let things start to cool down to eating temperature because right now it's all boiling yep but it does look festive let's get a fork and fluff that rice make sure it's tender okay got a fork here just gonna go in there and do some fluffing oh yeah i'll do a little more once i put y'all back where you belong oh yeah looks good to me but you never know 
until you give it a taste test, right? Make sure it's tender. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll set some over there to cool. And we're going to put our lid back on. Keep that moisture on in there. We've already turned the burner off to start letting our bean mixture cool on down. Yeah. Because it's boiling hot too. And as it cools, oh, we like to have a disaster there. And knock the rice right in the flow. Got to pay attention to what we're doing, folks. Yeah. But, as I'm saying, that bean mixture will get thicker as it cools down to eating temperature. Yes, it will. And like I say, if it gets too thick on you, throw some water in it, stir it on up. Or, hey, a little bit of beef broth, vegetable broth. Yeah. Dissolve a bouillon cube and throw in it for more added flavor you can. And we're going to let things cool on down here while we get our toppings all situated. Yeah, I'm thinking for tonight, we already got diced up onion. I do love fresh onion in my bean burritos as well, even though you saw we put a pile of onions in it. But I've taste tested that bean mixture now a couple of times. And woo! Yeah, if my cutoffs weren't tight, they'd just been knocked slap off of me. It's that flavorful. Trust me, it is. Make sure you use two packets of taco seasoning for one big can of Friolis, that is beans. You know, that was the 31 ounce can. So now, let's try the rice and make sure it's just perfect by using Zatarain's instructions. Oh yeah. No, I might say, that come out right on the money, honey. Now, like I say, let's just let it, those beans cool down a little bit while we get our toppings ready. Get us a tortilla, softened on up, and hey, we'll be ready to eat the line forms over there. <laughs> Well, we've been letting our bean mixture cool down for about 30 minutes, and it has thickened up quite a bit. But I got to get a tortilla ready. So I've got one of those Chi Chi's flour tortillas in between two damp paper towels. And now I'm going to slap this in the nuclear oven, i.e., microwave, for about 15 seconds to heat it on up. Make it more pliable, be easy to fold once we get it filled, okay? Now, while we're heating up the tortilla, we can take a look at what I'm going to be having on mine tonight. We're going to have some fresh chopped onion, some fresh chopped lettuce, a few of these here nice sliced black olives, some Mexican four cheese blend, a little bit of the thick and chunky salsa, finish them off with some sour cream from the fine folks at Daisy. So yeah. We'll be taking our bean mixture, spreading it out on that tortilla, top it with some of this here fine Spanish rice, and then proceed with our toppings right here. And of course, if you want jalapenos on it, you want some other kind of peppers, you want Fritos, whatever your heart desires, you can have that too. This is what I got, and this is what I'm having tonight. So, hey, let me get you set up. And let's get to building one, okay? I'm starved. And then, hey, y'all can all heat up your own tortillas, grab your own plates out of the cupboards, and make you one up, too. There's plenty in the pot, as you can see. So, yep, we got our one tortilla there. And we just got to unwrap it from the paper towels. Ain't hard. Slap her on that plate. And we'll save our paper towels for the next one. Waste not, want not. Now, to build our north of the border bean burrito, we're going to take some of this fine bean mixture. We're just going to plop her on on there. And I could even let it cool down some more. Whew, 
We got a little messy right there, but that'll be okay. Now, I'm going to top it with some rice. And did you know that by doing this simple one thing right here, adding rice with your beans, it changes it from a protein pack powerhouse to a complete protein pack powerhouse. Yes, it does. Now, going to add us in some of these fine chopped onions. That'll give us a nice crunch. Now I know we put a lot of onions in it already. But I'm going to tell you, that bean mixture is mighty fine, folks. Mighty fine. We're going to add a little bit of lettuce on top. That'll give us some more crunch. There we go. A few of these here black olives. A few. We're just going to toss them right on in there. We're not going to be stingy like Taco Bell, okay? They don't even give them to you anymore. Now a little bit of cheese. Just a dusting of cheese. Right there. Some of this here nice medium salsa. If we can get it out of the container. There we go. And I gotta get a spoon for the sour cream. Spread that out on the top. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah. Mighty fine. Now we just got to try to roll it up. And I'm not even going to worry about rolling both ends up. Now I put a pile on here. So it may not roll too good, but it'll eat good. Mm -hmm. I'm just starving, folks. Let me get a toothpick out. There we go. That'll hold her together till we get to eat it. I put too much filling in. I always do that. Maybe you do too. Yep. But it's still going to eat good. Only thing we got to do now is taste test it, right? So let's give it a go. Yep. Now it's time to eat. And I want to say one thing about this here burrito. And yeah, I overfilled it. You know, that's where your eyes are, you know, they don't see exactly what you're putting on there. Your stomach's hungry. So your eyes load it on up. Maybe sometimes too much. But it'll be okay. It all eats well. It all mixes together. And this particular bean mixture works fine with rice, with beef, whatever you want to do. And add to your bean burrito or just eat it as a bean burrito all by itself with a little bit of onion and salsa too. Maybe some sour cream and cheese. And it's a wonderful meal. And it's fairly inexpensive, as you can see. And anybody can create it. Another thing I'd like to leave you with, before I chomp on down on it, is it's a power-packed meal. You've got your beans for your protein. You've got your starches and your rice. The two combined make a complete protein got all those antioxidants and the tomatoes and the green chilies there's so much vitamin C going on in here 
all kinds of antioxidants, all kinds of minerals and vitamins too. If you look up every ingredient, it's just like those black olives. Slap full of zinc they are. We all know the onions are antibacterial, antifungal, antimicro. They're just anti. They're good for you. So hey, enough talking about how good this all is. And let's try to take a bite and not make too big of a mess. Okay? Ooh, yeah. It's it's a big one. That's tasty. Mm -mm -mm. Folks, let me tell you something, friends and family. That bean filling from the north of the border, bean burrito, is jam up all by itself. But you throw on that Spanish rice. You throw on some cheese, some lettuce, some black olives, whatever you like. Throw some avocado in there, too. And I'll tell you what, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, it's mighty fine. It's mighty fine eating. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I hate to eat in front of you, but you don't even know how I did it. It's going on nine, and we started around six. It's not that it takes that long to prepare this dish. It takes that long to show all of you what we do and how we do it. And I don't mind. But I hope you'll try this one time. Maybe you make something similar. If so, let us all know in the comments below the video how you make your burritos, your special ones. And how you know, until I, you know the kitty crew, you know them all, Cleo, Spooky Speedy, Sometimes he clear. And little Gracie, the princess of the house too. See y'all on that next episode and video of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. Y'all take care. Stay safe. And God bless you if you have blessed those in your lives. Goodbye for now. Whew, if y'all want one, like I say, grab a plate. I got the tortillas over by the nuclear oven. You know where the paper towels are? Dampen them up, get them going, start heating them up. We got plenty of food here for a crowd. Ooh, and I'm gonna probably eat too. Woo me. Look at that goodness. Mm-mm. Later all.